The Storage Wars myth of finding the coolest and most valuable treasures simply by opening the right locker is about as realistic as the Goonies. Here are the reasons why what you see on the show is anything but reality. Dave Hester, one of the stars of Annie's Storage Wars, not only told the world the show was fake, he laid it all down in a lawsuit he filed against the network in late 2012. According to ABC, Hester filed the lawsuit because he said Annie fired him for complaining about all the fakery. Hester alleged wrongful termination, unfair business practices, and breach of contract and made it very clear in his suit that the show is staged. The defendants would like the public to believe that the series presents a genuine and accurate portrayal of the abandoned storage locker auction process. Process. The truth, however, is that nearly every aspect of the series is faked. There's always been speculation that Storage Wars and other reality TV programs are fake, but when a reality star actually comes forward and says so on an actual legal document, it can get kind of hard to keep suspending that disbelief. Hester's lawsuit referred to a contest and contestants, and seemed to allege that Storage Wars is a game show that's been rigged. A&E, on the other hand, said the show is protected by the First Amendment, which basically gives producers the right to run it however they like. Does it really matter if the games are rigged? No! The games are rigged? Yes! It's kind of a strange argument that essentially lies are protected by the First Amendment. A&E seems to basically be admitting that it's all just a ruse. But it does make a certain weird kind of sense if you also consider that scripted dramas don't have an obligation to tell the truth. Really, the only thing that separates reality television from scripted television is perception. You might suppose that reality TV is supposed to be real, but there aren't any laws that say it has to be. Hester did not initially emerge triumphant in the suit, but it wasn't because the judge decided the show was on the up and up. The judge actually decided that all the fakery was fine because it was, quote, expressive free speech. According to Screener, the judge ultimately decided that Hester wasn't specific enough with his accusations of wrongful termination and threw out the case. But he also said Hester could refile with a more specific accusation. That's what Hester did, and in July 2014, the case was finally settled for an undisclosed amount. The settlement really only addressed the accusations of wrongful termination, not the fakery accusations, so reality TV can just go on doing what it's always done. Because if fake reality television is simply expressive free speech, then there really isn't any expectation of honesty between reality TV producers and their audiences, at least legally. Here's the punchline. According to International Business Times, after the lawsuit was over, A&E welcomed Hester back to the show. Hester was a popular character, and before his return, the show's ratings were on the decline. Plus, on-screen conflict is great for reality television, and you can't really sue your employer and come back to the office without some residual tension lingering around. This is America. I can say whatever I want. Beyond that, there are some more sinister reasons why keeping Hester close is probably a good thing for the network. We've already seen what happens when he's not working for A&E. Under contract, he's probably more likely to refrain from ratting out all the fakery at his first opportunity. What better way to make sure a former employee stays loyal than to make him an employee again? The show's producers are used to the accusations. The summer before Hester filed his lawsuit, executive producer Tom Beers defended the show during a panel discussion sponsored by the National Geographic Channel. When one of the panelists said something about the rumors that the containers on Storage Wars were, quote, salted, Beers said, Nope, I can honestly tell you that the stuff found in those containers are found in storage containers. His statement left a lot of wiggle room. If the stuff was bought at antique stores, then transported to storage containers, then technically that statement would still be accurate. Beers also went on to say that they might have 20 or 30 auctions and occasionally just combine their finds into one locker so they don't have to film all the lockers individually. That's not exactly salting, but it isn't reality either. In that same National Geographic panel, Beers also admitted to scripting interviews with cast members. It was excused as a substitute for narration, because no one likes to listen to those deadpan off-camera narrators. Beers said, I have to admit, there's some writing involved. We do it in Storage Wars. We do it in America's Lost Treasures. I'm so tired of narration driving story. Stars are given about half their lines, according to Beers, so they can tell their own stories. That seems like a minor offense compared to some of the other things Storage Wars has been accused of. And anyway, it's not like anyone was actually fooled by the stellar acting chops of the Storage Wars stars. Are you guys gonna be able to rummage through stuff and dresses like that? Yeah, we girl. can rummage through anything with anything on. On the other hand, is it reality if it's scripted? And more importantly, is reality more important than the quality of the entertainment? 
According to Business Insider, Hester lobbed a whole lot of accusations at the show, and one of those was that instead of just letting the drama unfold, the network would sometimes pay for the lockers bid on by less experienced members of the cast, so the playing field would be even. So while the bigger, more established storage locker moguls were using their own money to invest in lockers, the smaller businesses were depending on A&E to keep them in the game. Admittedly, it wouldn't be much of a war if one of the armies had an overwhelming advantage. Plus, if you're going to let your weaker cast members go bankrupt on bad purchases or get constantly outbid because they lack capital, you're going to have an unsustainably high turnover in your cast. So, from a pragmatic standpoint, this is probably one of a &E's lesser accused crimes. According to Business Insider, Hester's lawsuit also weirdly called out another particular act of fakery, claiming nearly every aspect of the series is faked, even down to the plastic surgery that one of the female cast members underwent in order to create more sex appeal for the show. That particular accusation led fans to speculate about who went under the knife. It does seem like kind of a low blow on Hester's part. The show might be fake, and one of the women on it might have had plastic surgery, but it seems like there's plenty of ammunition against the network without having to drag other cast members members into it. Before the stars of Storage Wars can find treasure among the cardboard and Rubbermaid, there first must be an auction. And the auction has to be fun and exciting, or viewers will say forget it and watch Better Call Saul instead. Saul Goodman. Yeah, it's like Saul Good, man. <laughs> that guy has a lot of energy. Hester's complaint claimed a and &E would often fake the auctions themselves. The suit stated, while on location filming an auction, defendants also film footage of the cast members and the public bidding when no actual auction is taking place, in order to make it appear that any of the cast members is bidding at any given auction, whether or not he or she is actually bidding on the units. There's some other, lesser fakery related to the auctions. For example, the cameras follow cast members as they leave before the end of the auction, presumably to inspect the contents of the locker they just bought, but the winning bidder usually isn't allowed to see the inside of the locker until the day after the auction. According to Radar Online, the accusations of salting aren't unfounded. There's a paper trail that shows stuff was planted inside storage lockers. A source with behind-the-scenes knowledge reportedly approached the outlet claiming there are invoices, checks, and other documentation where the production company actually compensated cast members for supplying items that were planted in the lockers and then discovered on camera. The source explained that cast members would charge A&E a rental fee if they would put their own valuable stuff in the storage lockers to later be found. Because this was essentially a business transaction, there are receipts and invoices and checks that provide evidence of fakery. Another anonymous source speaking to NPR's On the Media in 2012 said he was acquainted with someone whose job was to purchase the antiques that the producers would then plant in the storage lockers. Sometimes, producers would even have things appraised weeks before the cast members actually discovered it on camera. The anonymous reality television employee who spoke to On The Media also had some damning things to say about the appraisers themselves. He said the show would bring items found in lockers to appraisers, which were not always or even often actual appraisers, and knowing that ruins the excitement of the show. So, the auctions aren't always auctions, the items found in the storage lockers aren't always found in the storage lockers, and the appraisers who decide the value of the items aren't actually appraisers, and therefore probably don't know what they're talking about. Also. The stars say lines fed to them by the producers, and the whole thing is tainted by network cash. What channel is Better Call Saul on again? And that includes the nine airings at 3.20 in the afternoon on channel KWBV. That is a prime slot. Anyone who has ever owned a storage unit can tell you what a normal storage unit actually looks like. It's full of spiders, everything is covered in dust, the boxes have all been haphazardly piled because it's really just junk that you don't want to deal with right now, and the monthly storage fee seems worth it compared to losing a weekend decluttering when you could be half asleep on your couch watching Storage Wars. If you pay attention to the show, you know that neatly arranged storage units tend to have elevated chances of containing valuable items. And if it's true that the storage units are salted, it seems logical that they're also staged to fit the narrative. Before there was Storage Wars, there was Antiques Roadshow, the original television series for finding out the value of an attic knick-knack and the best way to watch people attempt to be gracious as a polite appraiser crushes their dreams by telling them that the terrifying doll they found in Grandma's basement isn't worth a wooden nickel. Antiques Roadshow has actual antiques and collectibles cred, and guess what? They totally think Storage Wars is fake. Antiques Roadshow executive producer Marsha Bemko said in an interview, quote, it's an entertainment show. She added that she thinks shows in the genre help generate interest in antiques 
Antiques, which is ultimately good for her show too. She also pointed out that the appraisers on Antiques Roadshow are more likely to provide a fair assessment of the items that are featured on the show since they don't have a financial stake in the buying or selling of those items. One of the show's appraisers added, I think it's also important to remember that those shows are totally staged. Is it really reasonable to think that someone on Storage Locker Wars is going to find a $100,000 item that somebody left in a storage locker? The show isn't called Storage Locker Wars, but point taken. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.